Yo, what up guys? Diesel Gaming here back with some final gear. And today we're going to be doing an in-depth look at the Misty Tower event as well as the character we get from the event, Amine Serica. We're going to do what I call the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're going to look at what's good about the event, what's bad about the event, and anything in between. We're also going to be going over the new character, Serica, and see if she's worth investing in and building. So without any more delay, let's get right into it. All right, let's go ahead and get started and dive into the game here and just we're going to go over the event first. All right. So looking at the event here, when we go in at tower level 31, you're going to have three guardians here to attack. And then once you attack them, you can attack the boss in the, the back there. Now, you only have three chances of this every day. And so that means you're going to have to have a total of 72 vigor. The other thing that this does is it, get, it lets you get multiplier tickets, which you can use on the boss um or you know the stages here another thing that unlocks here is once you get to tower level 29 you have some ex stages to clear once you clear them you will get some first clear rewards and after that there's really no reason to do the ex stages so at this point in the event what you're going to be doing is basically attacking these three bosses here and then attacking the major boss and then once you're doing that you're going to come down here to the main story and you're going to sweep your remaining vigor and that's pretty much what you're going to want to do and how to get as much tokens as possible now like i said with the multipliers you can probably use it on the last boss if you can because that's going to give you 120 tokens otherwise you can dump the rest of your multipliers um on the sweep option because it does give you an option to sweep once you do that, it, you can use the multiplier tickets. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and talk about the good of this event. Well, one of the good things about this event is you're gonna get plenty of resources, right? So if you go to the shop, you can see that we're gonna get a wedding ring. We're gonna get a bunch of resources for Serica to upgrade. We get scatter modules, we get critical crash. We get items to level up the characters. We get skill upgrades, we get gold. There's a ton of stuff that we get and with the trophy system, we're, uh, we're gonna get a few more crystals and some more critical crashes. Like we're gonna get a ton of currency that's really good to have. That's one great thing about this, this particular event. Scatter modules and critical crashes are really nice to have. Upgrading skills, also really good to have. The wedding ring, that's a pretty rare resource that normally costs crystals to get that's good to have right so these are all really nice and the extra crystals to boot is always good to have and another thing that was brought up to my attention during the collab having a um separate thing for serica here when you get like these light sticks and you get the idle 101 advances and things like that what makes this really good is that it means you can level this character up without sacrificing an, another unit that you're currently leveling so you can go ahead and level her up all the way once you get the event done without sacrificing whoever you're you're currently leveling up she's treated as a secondary unit so you don't have to waste those resources on her she gets her own special resource other than that i think the event is pretty straightforward right you climb the levels here and you just clear things out and you buy stuff from the shop it's nice straightforward of an um, event so i think this is another good thing going for it as well another nice thing about this is the ranking system the ranking system is good whale bait in my opinion and and this is a good way to attract whales without detracting the free to play experience and this is super important right because if a whale gets more bonuses just for being like level one you know i hate when games are like okay the leaderboard uh level one character gets you know 1000 crystals number two gets 500 and you know number three gets 100 and you know everybody else gets nothing you know this is just a cosmetic flex this is nice i wish more games would do this and i would like to see this game do this as well having whales attracted to the game with cosmetic means of flexing instead of having a power crept you know way of, of flexing I, I think this is much better and it still attracts whales to the game and whales to the event which gives the game more money so this is all very important stuff and last but not least the greatest thing about this event is the sweep option anytime you have a way 
of not having to go through and grind everything out. This is really nice, it saves time, and you can just confirm out of it and come back later to get the rewards. We've gone over what's good about this event or what I like about the event, and let's talk about what I think is bad about the event and what this event really fails at doing. Well, to talk about the first thing, we're gonna have to look at Amine here. So when we go down here and we look at her, you actually cannot level her talents up. It requires sequence cores, which I think this might be in like a bug, but it requires sequence cores and there's no way to actually get her sequence cores. You can't get sequence cores from the shop. You can't get sequence cores from the event. There's literally no way to level up her talents, which effectively makes Serica useless. There's no way to level up her talents. And what's odd about this is everything else about the character has its own special currency. You use special currency to get her star level up. You use a special currency to get her talents, um, her skills leveled up, but you don't get anything special to level up her talent. And not only is this not a special currency, you literally can't get her sequence cores. And uh, I don't even think you can summon for her. There's literally no way to level up her talents. This is just awful. Now, another odd thing about this event is that there's no mention of her custom mech. She very clearly has a custom mech. Here's what the custom mech model looks like. I actually like it. I think it looks really cool. And her skills, when you when you go in and look at her skills, you can see it does show that she has a additional custom mech activation effect. So she very clearly has a custom mech, but there's no mention of whether you can get it in the event or not. There's no way to actually, like there's no parts in the shop for it or anything like that. So this is yet another thing about the character that pretty much makes her useless. Yes, we get a free character, that's awesome. But uh, if we can't get her custom mech and we can't talent her out, she's useless, she's useless and dead in the water. There's no reason to use her at all if you can't talent her and you can't get her custom mech. And the last really big gripe about this event that I have to talk about because I think it's just really awful and it just doesn't make sense. And that is these uh, boxes right here, the Misty Tower Treasure Chest. This is awful. There is way too many items that are randomized in this box. Black Blossom, Desert Star, Big Boss, Meow Mech, Swift, and Masula are all super easy to farm and get for free. There's no reason that this pack should be diluted with these parts. It is absolutely absurd that we have 12 different randomized customized mechs now this can work as great augment fodder but if you're trying to get corrupted heart or steel fortress from this it's next to impossible because it's basically a two percent chance that you're going to get one of the items that you need because there's 12 different custom mechs in here and there's four different parts for each custom mech right so yeah that's, that comes down to about a two percent chance that you're going to get an item that you need it, it's absolutely absurd so the odds of you being able to get a fully corrupted heart or a fully uh, steel fortress is is like next to none and because it's so diluted there's no reason that this should have been diluted this far you could have taken those uh mechs out that i mentioned and left northern wrath rn special centaurus corrupted heart and steel fortress and it still would have been diluted enough that people wouldn't have just been you know getting them all left and right or whatever but it still would have been a lot easier to be able to get something that you need black blossom you can buy from the redemption shop desert desert star big boss meow mech you know masula these can literally just be gotten from the personal instances there's there's no reason for this to be in here it's absolutely like i don't know it hurts my brain like why why is this in here why is it so diluted makes no sense so to make it clear the reason why i dislike that the tower chest is so diluted is because this makes it really impossible for free to play players to get something that they could use if you need corrupted heart or steel fortress like me like those are literally the only custom mechs out of that whole treasure chest that i need it's impossible if i'm just relying on it yeah i could buy the pack from you know the steel fortress from the pack in the shop but you know a free-to-play player doesn't have that option and this would have been a great step at being free to play friendly and they just chose not to do it it just makes no sense so let's go ahead and talk about what's ugly about the event so 
when I say ugly, what I actually mean is some, you know, things that are buggy and not necessarily game breaking, but just don't make the event look good. So there's actually not much bad about this event. Now, the only two things that are kind of buggy is, you know, it doesn't show you how much things cost in the shop until you actually go to redeem it. So this isn't like, it's just kind of like buggy UI. So it's, it's nothing crazy, right? It, it's nothing just gonna, that's gonna break the game. So, you know, that's why I call it ugly. And the other thing that I find ugly about this event is all the way, uh, I gotta get down to it, sorry. All the way down on tower level six, what is this? What is this 50% chance thing? Like there is no reason for this boss to be here because like I don't know anyone who's actually unlocked it and there is no, there's no reason for you to unlock it, right? If you have to attack these low level areas to, to get it, you're better off just skipping this entirely and, and, and going you know back to tower level 30 and doing it that way like it makes no sense to me why that's there it's just kind of weird and buggy so uh yeah it's but pretty much it okay so the next thing i want to do is i want to go in and i want to look at amine i want to look at serica here and and just kind of do a, an overview of her skills what she brings to the table and whether or not I think she's a good unit. Now I'm gonna base this on her uh, on her custom mech activation because I it do, she does have one and I'm, I'm assuming they're gonna put it in the game. So I'm gonna review her based on her custom mech. So her high gear here, what she's gonna do with her high gear is damage everybody on the battlefield. And then she's going to apply a debuff and a buff for your own teammate. So what she's gonna do here is um, increase the enemy's damage taken by 5%. So you do more damage against them and then reduces the damage they deal um by 20 percent right so reduce increases enemies damage taken by five percent and reduces their damage dealt by 20 percent for five seconds then she restores everybody on the allies units she's going to restore all of their health and then she's going to buff their damage by an additional 10 percent so this makes her a really good support unit off of her high gear she heals she provides damage mitigation and damage increases for everybody this right here makes her a good support unit her first passive is going to increase her health and it's going to, it's going to increase the health of everybody on the team the second passive is going to reduce damage taken for her and everybody on the team. And then her third passive will help her increase her regen ability for her high gear, right? So she's gonna be recharging energy at a much faster rate and pushing out the heals, pushing out the buffs. So this makes her kind of like an energy recharge battery for herself. So overall, my final thoughts on Serica is, I think she's actually an excellent, unit she's she's a good support unit right she does have a very generic talent and that does set her back from being an amazing unit but if you just if you're somebody who doesn't have liangle and you don't have a good schmilly she's going to be a really good unit to put in your team because she provides heals she provides damage mitigation she provides survivability in the form of again damage mitigation and higher hp pools she's gonna make all of your characters in in the entire team do more damage by debuffing the enemy and simultaneously buffing all of the allies on the team so this makes her a really good support unit and the only thing holding her back is that we don't have our custom mech right now and we don't have any good talent if she had a good talent this could make her a very, very attractive unit to use. However, at the moment, she's just kind of good. She's not bad, but she's not excellent because she's kind of being held back by a generic talent. But hey guys, those are just my opinions on things. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think about this event? What do you think about Serica? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comments. If you've made it this far in the video, consider liking and subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. And I would also greatly appreciate it. All right, guys, have a great day. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.